Are you looking to start a Belagarth Realm, or just looking to learn how to check weapons correctly? This video is going to walk you through it step by step, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Kaleda. I'm a nine-year fighter. I claim the Realm of Grand as my home realm. I started the unit Sons of Silas. I've been part of almost every weapons check that I've ever been to. Here today, I'm going to walk you through, step by step, the importance and skills that is needed for checking weapons at a Belagarth event. Weapons checking is the first step and one of the most important for ensuring that the field at a Belagarth event is safe. Being a full contact game, we have to make sure that failing weapons do not get on the field. As a weapons checker, your responsibility is to make sure that the weapons that do get to the field are safe, friendly, and usable. If you're not familiar with Belgarth's rule set, click the link in the description below to find the Book of War. It's important to be familiar with it, as the rules in it will dictate how you run your weapons check. You will need a copy of the Book of War, or at least a copy of the rules that reference weapons checking, included in the appendices. You'll also need scales, such as a postal scale, for checking the weight of swung weapons, and a hang scale, like a fish scale, for checking the draw weight on bows. You'll also need tape measures for checking certain lengths regarding the overall length of weapons and handles. You will need a weapons checking template, and of course, you'll need weapons and volunteers. Before you start weapons check, it always helps to refamiliarize yourself with the rules. I've been fighting for nine years, I've been helping in weapons check for seven years, and even to this day, I'll recheck appendices before going into weapons check to make sure that things are getting checked not only correctly, but fairly. You should also make sure that you have those rules generally memorized. When you check weapons, your goal is not to destroy them or damage them. If the weapon is already failing, it's failing by itself. You as the weapon checker can make things fail that should otherwise pass. What does that mean? Well, it means that when you're checking a weapon, use a large open hand, use the meat of your palm and the meat of your fingers to check. Don't dig your fingers into the weapon because that can make it fail. So check it with large hand, large motions, feeling for things that are incorrect. Remember, never use your fingernails or fingertips because you can make the weapon fail. Treat every weapon the same. We all have friends. We all know what certain people's gear looks like. You may be tempted when you're looking at things to check things differently because of your friends. Don't. The fairness of the field and the safety of the field are pingent on treating everything the same, no matter who it's from or who made it. Don't be afraid to get a second opinion. There are a lot of people in weapons check, and there will often be a head weapons checker, a person that is more familiar with the rules and has been around for a little bit longer. Double check with that person if you're uncertain of something. Again, this is for safety, so you can't be too cautious. The first thing we're going to talk about are class one weapons, also called blue weapons. I'm going to walk you through step by step the process for checking a blue weapon to make sure that it's safe. Using a large open hand and not your fingertips, feel up along the striking edge of the weapon. You're feeling for divots, cuts, places where the foam may be breaking down. When you get to the tip, grab the weapon between both hands and you're going to check it side to side. This is to check the stability of the tip and make sure that the tip of the weapon has not separated from the core. Then you're going to flip around to the pommel, check to make sure that the pommel is properly affixed. At both ends of the weapon, you're going to use the meat of the heel of your hand to check and ensure that the core cannot be felt through the ends of the weapon. It's safety. We are taking things that could be dangerous, kite spar, fiberglass, and turning them into safe passing gear. The weapons checking template that we talked about earlier should have two holes. There's a two and a half inch hole for checking the tip of the weapon and a two inch hole for checking the pommel. And the way to check it is just put it against the end of the weapon, as you can see there. And as you do this, again, you as a weapon checker can make things fail that should not. You should simply check the template against the weapon and not attempt to screw the weapon through the template. On the pommel side, same thing. Using the pommel hole of the template, check against the pommel of the sword. You want to check them for flex. And the basic way that you can do this is to just hold each end of the weapon in one hand, making sure to not dig in with your fingers, and gently bend the weapon. If it doesn't flex, it's fine. If it does flex, you need to make sure that it does not flex more than 45 degrees. And one way of doing this is to strike the weapon against the edge of a shield. Some blue weapons are only single-edged. If they are single-edged, they need 12 inches of contrasting color tape or paint on the back edge in order to mark it as a non-striking surface. You want to make sure that the weapon hits comfortably. What does that mean? Well, it's going to pop, and you should hit yourself hard to make sure that the weapon is safe. Unfortunately, there is no objective way of saying whether a weapon passes or fails hit. You should ask yourself, do I want to get hit with this? 
If the answer is no, the weapon fails. So use your best judgment, and remember, you are keeping the field safe. Take the weapon, grasp it firmly in your hand, and aim for either your thigh or your shin. Swing overhand down on yourself in order to place the hit that you need to. Regarding flails, most of the same rules for checking apply as apply to regular blue weapons. You're gonna template the pommel. You're going to feel up the haft padding, but obviously there are a couple of important differences from a hinged weapon to a non-hinged weapon. The max length of the chain of a flail is six inches. Most weapon checking templates are cut to be six inches long and it makes for an easy way of checking. So holding the weapon upright so that the flail is hung under its own weight, check the template against the rope. And if it's less than six inches, it passes. You'll also notice on the rope that there are foam rings. Those are important because they keep the rope from wrapping around the limbs of anyone that you may strike. With those rings, you want to make sure that when they are all compressed, there is no more than one inch of gap between the top of the haft and the rings. On the head of the flail, you need to measure across two axes and make sure that the flail head measures 14 inches. To do this, you simply take a tape measure and wrap it around the head of the flail in one axis and then on a second axis. If both are over 14 inches, the flail head passes. With the use of the scale on blue weapons, any blue weapon that is over 24 inches long must weigh at least 12 ounces. So if a weapon seems questionably weighted, double check it on your scale. It is worth noting that a lot of blue and red weapons, which is the next class of weapon that we are covering, also have stab tips. If they have a piece of green tape around the pommel, that marks the weapon as stab legal. We'll talk about checking stab tips when we talk about checking class three weapons. On blue weapons, the max length is 48 inches, and the handle must be no longer than 12 inches or one third of the weapon's length, whichever is longer, but it cannot exceed half of the total length of the weapon. Now we're going to talk about red weapons, class two weapons. These are great swords, pole axes, long weapons. A lot of the checking is going to be very similar to class one weapons. You're still going to check the pommel, the tip, and you're going to work your hands up and down the blade or the striking surface in order to make sure that there are no divots, gouges, or any other damage to the blade. Use both hands on the sides of the flat to check for wobble and gently twist the tip to make sure that it is not separated from the core. Make sure that the weapon doesn't have excessive flex. Remember, some flex does help the weapon to hit safely. The basic way to check this flex is to grab the weapon at either end and to bend it gently. If it doesn't bend, then you don't have to worry about it. If it does have some flex, you can check how much it has by striking the weapon against the edge of a shield. The first big difference between red weapons and blue weapons, apart from the length, is the weight. Where blue weapons only have to weigh 12 ounces, red weapons must weigh at least 24 ounces. Red weapons must be at least 48 inches long. If it is exactly at 48 inches, you're fine, and anything above that includes red weapons. The handle for red weapons must be no longer than 18 inches or one third the length of the weapon, whichever is longer. Remember, red weapons can also be built to be stab legal. If they are, you'll have to check them in the same way that you check class three weapons, which we'll talk about later. When checking red weapons, there's a problem that does not come up with blue weapons. Due to the length of the weapon, it is very difficult to check it on yourself. So you will need volunteer testers, people that can volunteer their backs to be checked on. When swing checking, you wanna hit them light, then medium, and then hard. Working through those levels of hit can ensure that the weapon is safe and that you're not going to injure the person that has volunteered. You'll also want to rotate your checkers regularly. Due to the impact of the weapons, you can become sore very quickly, and that soreness can lead to passing weapons failing, or worse and more dangerously, failing weapons slipping through onto the field. Next up comes class three weapons. Class three weapons are generally stabbing only weapons, such as spears. When you're checking them, there are certain things that carry through from the other weapons. You're going to check to make sure that the tip of the spear cannot fit through the two and a half inch hole on your template. And you want to ensure that the pommel cannot fit through the two inch hole on your template. Green weapons are only allowed to flex 45 degrees. And a good way of checking this is to hold the weapon at the pommel and about halfway up the haft and give it a firm shake. Class three weapons, again, have some differences from red and blue weapons. First off is that they have no weight requirements. Your spears can be however light as you can make them. And regarding length, there is no limit on length. They can be however short or however long you want to make them. The handle can be two thirds the length of the weapon. No longer though. When you're checking green weapons, you want to work your hands up the haft padding to make sure, again, there are no gouges and there are no divots because in the press of a line, even though it's only a thrusting weapon, it can get knocked into other people and it can be quite painful. Remember, 
Use the meat of your hand. Don't dig your fingers in because you can damage other people's gear. Check the head for wobble. And a good way to do this is to brace the head with one hand and using the meat of your other hand, press against it to make sure that it does not come out of line with the core. Because if it comes out of line with the core in battle, it could slip to the side and tear off. The head should be soft, but not overly soft. You want the foam to compress, but also resist. If it compresses down too fast, it can hit too hard and cause injuries. When checking the hit with class three weapons or other weapons that include stabbing tips, you want to check against a person's back, much the same as you do with reds. You start with a light stab, then a medium stab, and only if those two are safe, move on to a hard stab. If all three of those pass, then your stab tip is good and your weapon passes. Shields are another common piece of equipment in Belagarth. When checking the edge of a shield, Feel along with an open hand, using the meat of your palm to make sure that you cannot feel down through the edge of the shield to the core. Then, you'll follow along with your other hand and give hard chops to the edge of the shield. Everybody's seen a kung fu movie. With the face of the shield, you want to feel along it to make sure that there are no holes down to the core or that there's not any sharp objects possibly caught in the foam or the fabric. After feeling it to make sure that it is safe, close your fist, strike the shield a couple times to make sure that it is solid, and rigid. Sometimes, especially with coreless shields, there may be some wobble to the shield itself. If the shield bends more than about 45 degrees, it fails. On the back of the shield, there will be handles or straps. You want to make sure that these handles and straps are securely fastened. The way to do this is to grip the handle, twist it gently, and pull on it against the shield. If the handle doesn't move, it's a passing handle. On shields that have straps, there may be bolts protruding from the back of the shield. Those should generally be rounded or covered with foam in order to make sure that they are safe. Any incidental contact with them could cause scrapes, cuts, or other injuries. Now we're going to talk about projectile weapons. Since projectiles are able to target the head, you want to be doubly sure that these are safe. The first thing that we're going to talk about is javelins. Unlike most weapons that can have any color cover you want, javelins must have a yellow cover. You should also aim to avoid yellow covers on spears due to potential confusion. They can flex more than any other weapon. Where most weapons can only flex 45 degrees, javelins are allowed to flex up to 90 degrees. This is because of safety as they fly through the air and impact people. Javelins must also be padded across their entire length. This is because while flying through the air, they can turn, they can twist, and if there was any unpadded portions, they could hit somebody and cause an injury. Again, you want to take your template and check both the head and the pommel of the javelin. Javelins can also be used in hand, so when you check them, make sure to check them the same way that you check green weapons. Stabbing into a person's back, light, then medium, and then hard. Before throw checking javelins, you want to check to make sure that the head is sturdy in much the same way that you do with green weapons. Because, while traveling through the air, if the side of the head of the javelin strikes your checker, it could hurt them. When throw checking, you want your partner to stand about 10 feet away from you. Throw the javelin overhand into their back. You may want to start with a light throw and then move on to a hard throw. Remember, this is a projectile and is legal to target the head. Be careful and be stringent. If it's not safe, fail it. Now we're going to talk about the more common form of projectile on the field, archery. Every other part of weapons check, your job is to ensure the safety of the people around you and the people on the field. This is especially the case with archery. Arrows are dangerous and deadly, so make sure that the arrows that have been converted for use for our game are safe. First thing you do, is similar to checking a green weapon, check the head of the arrow all the way around to make sure that it's stable. If it folds over to the side, it's not safe. Then, using the meat of your hand, check the top of the arrow to make sure that it compresses but has some resistance. Using your tape measure, you want to measure from the draw stop of the arrow to the knock of the arrow. If it's less than 28 inches, it's passing. If it's more than that, the arrow fails. With bows, people should bring them to weapons check strung and ready. If they're not strung, don't string them yourself. Now with bows, they should pull 35 pounds at 28 inches. It means that when you connect a scale to the string and draw the string back the length of an arrow's draw, it should pull at 35 pounds. The way to check this is to knock an arrow to your bow and connect your draw scale to the bow and holding the scale securely so that it doesn't slip through your fingers, draw the arrow back to its full draw and then check the poundage on your scale. If it pulls at or less than 35 pounds, the bow is safe and passing. When checking the hit with bow and arrow, you should shoot at the back of a checker. That checker should stand 15 feet from you. The minimum distance for a full draw in the game is 20 feet, and at 15 feet, if the arrow is safe from a full draw, it should be safe at 20. To shoot, aim for a meaty portion of your partner's back. Try not to hit them in the neck, spine, or kidneys, 
as that can cause false negatives or false positives. When strike testing archery, you have to make sure that you are using a bow that pulls at 35 pounds. This is because 35 pounds being the maximum weight, that's the strongest bow that could be on the field. You have to prepare for a heavy hitting bow to fire any arrow that might be on the field. Again, we're trying to be as safe and as certain as we can be. Arrows must have a securely fastened knock at the end of the arrow. And by securely fastened, I mean that when you hold the knock and the arrow itself, they should not come apart. The arrow must also have two complete fletchings. If it doesn't have two complete fletchings, it's not safe and must be failed. As with reds and greens, be sure to rotate your backs during arrow check. As people get sore, their decision making may falter and they may pass failing arrows. Also during arrow check, watch for excessive bounce back. After the arrow strikes the target, the distance that it travels back toward the shooter from the target. If the bounce back is too high, it could lead to a knock flying point first into a person instead of the head of the arrow. Now, traditional bows are not the only bows that can be seen on the field. Crossbows are also legal for Belagarth. For additional rules on those, consult the Book of War, as the rules are vastly different. Checking the bolts is the same as checking arrows. However, since crossbows cannot be half-drawn, they must be checked from 10 feet. The last class of projectile weapon are rocks. Rocks must be made entirely of foam, cloth, and tape. There cannot be a core in rocks. Rocks are also only legal when striking the head. So to hit check them, have your checkers stand and throw the rock at their head. Let us know in the comments below or on our Facebook page if you have any questions or if there's anything that we can do to help you. Also, be sure to check out our website at Belagarth.com. If you want to see more videos like weapons checking, realm building, or anything else pertaining to Belagarth, make sure that you like and subscribe to this video, and we'll see you next time.